had wanted to take a crash course in Poland before I left the United States so I could give this presentation in Polish, but my wife said, no, no, the audience will want to practice their English. So I'll give the, the presentation in English. It would be difficult to exaggerate Mozart's greatness. You heard some of his music on the way in. For many, the beauty of his music transcends that of any other composer. Even the great Beethoven, who had little regard for the work of other composers, held Mozart in awe. Of the musical scores that were found in his possession at the time he died, Mozart was more heavily represented than any other composer. And when Mozart died in uh, December of 1791, Franz Joseph Haydn predicted that posterity would not see such talent again in a hundred years. Now almost 200 years later, we wonder if the world will ever see such talent again. Speculation as to Mozart's death has been great ever since the night he died in 1791. At that time he shuddered, vomited a great uh, brown arch, and then died. No less than 118 different diagnoses have been proposed in the medical literature. And these have varied from murder to rheumatic fever. Many of you are aware, no doubt, uh, as a result of the play Amadeus and also the movie of the same name, that Antonio Salieri was one of the original suspects in the poison theory. You may not know that the Masons were also suspected of having murdered Mozart because they had become enraged because he had revealed secrets sacred to their order in the magic flute. There is no evidence to support any of these theories, nor is there any known poison capable of producing the signs and symptoms that he had. What then was his illness and what diagnosis would be a reasonable explanation for his signs and symptoms. Let me review with you now Mozart's medical history. And together, let's see if we can figure out what might have killed him. Mozart was never really healthy. This is Mozart as a young boy. He was a small child. His father wanted to keep him small because he was making a lot of money taking him around to perform as a child prodigy. Uh, in fact, as a child, he was at least small partially because he had numerous illness, illnesses, many of which were quite severe. His long history of poor health began almost at birth because as was typical of that era, his early diet consisted almost exclusively of honey water and barley gruel. Uh, thus, it is safe to assume that he was probably malnourished right from uh, very early childhood. As seen in this slide here, he also had numerous severe infections that are complications of uh, infection with the bacillus, uh, I'm sorry, with the bacterium streptococcus. Uh, there is, it causes pharyngitis seen here, but most importantly, he had two episodes of acute rheumatic fever, which is another uh, condition that follows streptococcal infections. However, streptococcal infections were not his only problem, uh, as we'll see in the next slide. Now, the other severe illnesses that Mozart had are also listed on this slide. When he was uh, 11, both he and his sister, Nanerl, developed smallpox. At age 16, he became jaundiced and uh, probably had uh, what we now know uh, today was viral hepatitis. At age 26, he had uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, a very severe illness, um, a severe form of gastroenteritis or a stomach infection. By the time uh, he reached his 30s, however, he appeared to have outgrown many of these severe childhood illnesses and did reasonably well except for, again, recurrent tonsillitis, recurrent sore throats, chronic headaches, stomach cramps, and an occasional toothache. 
when he looked like this during his last year, um, he was surprisingly free from physical ailments. In fact, many of his letters to his wife uh, from that time um, focus on the things he had to eat, uh, how healthy he felt. Um, this must have been um, some comfort to her because she was not particularly healthy herself at that time. She was having problems of her own with inflamed veins. Um, but he, on the other hand, was enjoying health that was much better than uh, in previous years. Feeling well that last year until the onset of his final illness, which over the course of a little less than two weeks killed him, that illness began suddenly, perhaps with fever, headache, and sweating. I say perhaps because we don't know for sure what his uh, symptoms were because the most detailed account of his illness, which is only moderately informative, was written by his sister-in-law, Sophie Heibel, 34 years after his death. No physician's description was ever recorded. In fact, I'm aware of only one brief comment by a physician on Mozart's illness. That one by a Dr. von Loeb's who uh, consulted on Mozart's case, claimed that Mozart was just one of many residents of Vienna who died of a disease that was absolutely identical to Mozart's in 1791. Others reported that Mozart's limbs were much inflamed and swollen, leading to speculation that he might have had arthritis or inflamed muscles, perhaps even trichinosis which is a parasitic disease caused by eating contaminated pork. Mozart's sister-in-law, however, was quite clear in her description of his illness that the most striking feature of his illness was progressive, generalized swelling of his arms, legs, and body. The kind of swelling you get if you twist your ankle your ankle becomes uh, swollen, except that Mozart's wasn't limited. His swelling was not limited to one area of his body. His swelling was all over his body and was not painful. This is what ref physicians refer to as edema. At one point in her account uh, of Mozart's illness, his sister-in-law, Sophie Heibel, reports that he complained to his wife, Constanza, that he had the taste of death in his mouth. This is one of the things that led to speculation that poison was the cause of his illness. Now, toward the end, Mozart's edema, his swelling, became so massive that he couldn't even turn over in bed without assistance. Eventually, he became delirious, developed vomiting and diarrhea, and then died. The official diagnosis, as seen here, was Heitzige's Frieselfieber. Friesel fieber. This translated is acute miliary fever, not military, as was written in the paper. Um, and this doesn't help much, because all it tells us about his illness is that he had fever with a rash composed of tiny spots. And there are many possible causes of fever accompanied by a rash with tiny spots. But given what we've just heard about the other findings of Mozart's illness, what could have been the cause of that illness? Mozart had an oddly shaped ear seen, seen here. See, this is normal. This is Mozart's. He had no earlobe here. His son, one of his sons, had the same ear, an oddly shaped ear. Now, since genetic abnormalities of the ear and the kidneys go hand in hand, some have suggested that Mozart died of congenital kidney disease. Based on the, the history we've just heard, more likely possibilities as to causes of Mozart's uh, final illness, given his history of recurrent streptococcal infections and the massive edema that dominated his final illness, acute rheumatic fever, and inflammation of the kidneys we call acute glomerulonephritis have to be much more important considerations. 
Acute rheumatic fever is a mysterious illness caused by bacteria called streptococci. And in particular, the uh, bacteria that are responsible for acute rheumatic fever belong to a group that microbiologists have designated Group A, like A, B, C, Group A. Um, it is an illness in which the patient's own immune system appears to turn against itself, forming antibodies which react to try to destroy not only the bacteria against which the antibodies are generated, but also start to destroy joints and the heart and the skin and the brain. The net result of these attacks by the antibodies on uh, these various structures is that patients develop a systemic illness in which there is inflammation of the hearts of the heart the joints the skin and the brain leading to what we refer to as arthritis a strange looking rash bizarre jerking movements because of inflammation of the brain which we call chorea now many believe that mozart died of acute rheumatic fever which attacked and destroyed his heart. Acute rheumatic fever, however, attacks the left side of the heart. That's the side of the heart that pumps blood out of the lungs and into the peripheral circulation, into the arms and the legs. When the left heart fails, blood backs up into the lungs so that the patient literally begins to drown in his own blood. The net result is that the patient develops severe shortness of breath. Mozart's problem was not shortness of breath. His problem was massive swelling of his entire body. Kidney disease is a much more likely cause of massive edema of the kind that Mozart exhibited in the history that was given by his sister-in-law. Let me start with the location of the kidneys. Kidneys are located in the abdomen and are shown here. They look like beans. They are composed of the structures you see here, a filtration device, microscopic filters called glomeruli, and collecting tubules. The glomeruli filter water, salt, and waste products out of the blood pass them into the collecting tubes where these materials are processed into urine. Urine is then eliminated and this is the way the body gets rid of its waste products. If these glomeruli, these microscopic filters, become inflamed, and that condition physicians refer to as glomerulonephritis, normal ingredients of the blood also pass through them and leak from the glomeruli into the collecting system. The uh, most important ingredients uh, as far as edema are, is concerned in this regard are proteins, especially a, a protein called albumin, which is the magnet that holds water inside the blood system. And when albumin leaks into the urine through inflamed glomeruli, the magnetic force within the blood that holds water into uh, the uh, blood vessels weakens and water begins to leak out into the tissue forming massive swelling that we refer to as edema. Early in the process when the edema is not severe one may just see puffiness around the eyes as shown in this child here. Mm -hmm. Later if the glomerulonephritis is severe and the amount of protein lost in the urine is great, the edema becomes generalized and severe as shown in this poor child here. I show a child in this picture rather than an adult because Mozart was an adult because glomerulonephritis is primarily a disease of children. Nevertheless, for reasons I'll tell you, I think 
that uh, Mozart's problem was glomerulonephritis. Most glomerulonephritis is caused by streptococci belonging to the streptococcal group known as group A. That's the group I've already referred to. Most cases are caused by streptococci belonging to group A. These are, are the streptococci which cause sore throat and skin infections. However, Mozart's case was not typical of the usual cases of acute strept, uh, streptococcal nephritis because his was fatal. It killed him. And it was part of an epidemic, which we've already heard. There were many other cases in Vienna at the time who had uh, died of a similar illness. Mozart's case was also atypical because he was not a child when he developed his illness. He was almost 36 years old. To glomerulonephritis caused by group A streptococci is almost never fatal, just to repeat, does not occur in epidemics, and as I've already indicated, is a disease primarily of children. Children, in fact, less than 10 years of age. Um, and for these reasons, some authorities say Mozart could not have died of glomerulonephritis. There is, however, a different form of glomerulonephritis, one caused by a streptococcus in group C, not A, not B, but C, the group C streptococcus. And this is a new theory about uh, the cause of Mozart's final illness. This organism is called streptococcus equi, equi as in horse. Um, this uh, streptococcus does cause epidemic acute glomerulonephritis. That is, many cases of glomerulonephritis uh, at the same time. It uh, affects adults and sometimes kills them. Recent epidemics of the disorder in South uh, America have been traced to contaminated milk, cheese, and other milk products. This is what I think killed Mozart and many of the other residents of Vienna in that winter of 1791. Streptococcus equi induced acute glomerulonephritis would explain his massive swelling, his death, and the epidemic nature of the illness. Although not as provocative a diagnosis as trichinosis, the parasitic disease that I referred to early, which is one of the more recent diagnoses, and not as common as rheumatic fever was. In, 17, in the 1790s in Europe, I still uh, suggest that glomerulonephritis caused by strep equi is the best explanation for the cause of his death. I have become a authority of, a, of sorts on historical medical mysteries because of a conference that I organize each year in Baltimore. It's called a Historical Clinical Pathological Conference. Its purpose is to explore some of the most famous medical mysteries of history in an effort to provide new insight into those mysteries by drawing upon the expertise of some of the most talented clinicians and the most informed historians available today. To date, there have been 10 such conferences. The very first one exhibited here uh, was the case of one of America's most celebrated poets, Edgar Allan Poe. Now, Poe died uh, of a 10-day illness dominated by a violent delirium. Our physician discussant shown here, Dr. Michael Benitez, diagnosed rabies. I thought it was a wonderful diagnosis at the time. However, on more intensive study, I've been forced to conclude that, that as many others have concluded, that Poe was a hopeless alcoholic and actually died of delirium tremens. Our second case was Alexander the Great, shown in this article here from Odyssey magazine, who died of an illness characterized by fever, progressive weakness that seemed to begin in his feet and ascended uh, up toward his head, and, and most interestingly of all, failure of his body 
to show evidence of decomposition after his death. I believe, uh, as our uh, clinical consultant did, that Alexander the Great died of typhoid fever complicated by a condition called ascending paralysis and that the failure of his body to show signs of corruption after death was a consequence of the fact that he appeared dead because of his ascending paralysis before he actually died. We next considered the case of Beethoven. This is a clip from a film that uh, was done by a, a group in Brazil. Beethoven, of course, was deaf, became deaf at a young age, but also developed cirrhosis of the liver. And this is what killed Beethoven. Our discussant, Dr. Uh, um, Michael Donenberg, thought that syphilis was the diagnosis. Syphilis was rampant in Europe at the time and that syphilis was the most likely cause of both his deafness and his cirrhosis. I'm inclined to agree with him, although I've been uh, wondering whether or not Lyme disease, which as in America is also a problem in Europe, might have been an alternate explanation for his illness because of the amount of time he spent in the countryside looking for inspiration. Now this is George Armstrong Custer, who is one of the most famous cavalry generals of American history. He was the most decorated cavalry general of the North during our Civil War. He was also the architect of one of the most spectacular defeats ever inflicted upon the U.S. military by a native force. In fact, it was such a spectacular defeat, many historians think he had to have been crazy to have lost that battle. Uh, because he was not only killed, but uh, three of his brothers, a cousin, and over 200 members of the 7th Cavalry were wiped out by um, Indian forces under the command of Chief Sitting Bull. Now, our, uh, and we did a, a conference on him to, to decide whether or not he had a mental problem. Our discussant, Dr. David Malott, who was a psychiatrist, felt that there was no evidence of any mental disease any more severe than one found in any of the cavalry commanders of that era, including those of Poland, who were by nature daring, flamboyant, and egocentric. Next, we considered Pericles and the plague of Athens the plague of Athens being the strange epidemic that struck the Athenians during their war with Sparta and ended the golden age of Greece, one of the most mysterious plagues of all time. Our discussant, Dr. David Durack, thought that the diagnosis was a disease called typhus fever. Based on my study of the case, I think smallpox is a more likely diagnosis. The next case we considered was Mozart. This is the woman who discussed the case. Her name is Faith Fitzgerald. She thought Mozart died of acute rheumatic fever. You know my opinion. Now, we considered three more cases. We considered Claudius, the emperor with the shaking head. We considered Herod the Great. And we considered the mental status of Joan of Arc. We actually did a mock trial to see if she could be successfully defended on a plea of insanity in Baltimore. Now, in the interest of leaving some time for questions, let me just say that the clinicians diagnosed mushroom poisoning as the cause of death for Claudius, kidney failure as the cause of death for Herod the Great, and probable schizophrenia that is a mental disorder which made her incompetent legally in the case of Joan of Arc.